All right, so the first problem we're going to look at um, is the Babylonian algorithm for approximating square roots. Uh, we're familiar with this symbol, the square root of 2, but how do we write the square root of 2 as a number that we um, would recognize as a decimal number? That's something that we don't uh, do much any in school anymore. Um, however, uh, doing so gives us some insight into the larger thing that we're going to see over and over again, which is this infinite process. Just repeating this operation to get closer and closer to the actual value of, some, uh, of something that we're interested in. So to start with, let's consider this statement that we have some number, x1, uh, equal to the square root of 2. Well, from high school, you might remember that if you multiply a square root by itself, uh, for example, the square root of 2 times itself, we will just get uh, what was inside the radicand, the 2. And um, similarly, we can rearrange this equation uh, to solve for just x1, and we see that we can rewrite x1 as 2 over x1. Now, the, the whole idea here, though, is that we don't know uh, what x1 is, and that's what we're trying to figure out. So let's consider these two values and also um, some ideas about what we know about the square root of 2. And one thing that we know about the square root of 2 is that it lies in between 1 and 2. How come? Because 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. 2 is between those, right? And this is the square root of 2 squared. So if it's, less, if it's more than 1 squared and less than 2 squared, it must be in between here. In terms of the, so that means that these values are in between there. Or at least it, we should guess, it would make sense to take values as our first guess somewhere in here. So let's say that we choose uh, x1 right in the middle here as um, 1.5. then 2 over x1 could be either to the right uh, or to the left, depending on that initial choice that we had made. What's important to notice about that is regardless of whether it's to the left or to the right, um, this, the actual root is going to be in between these. Because if, I, if x1 is less than the actual root, so let's say the square root of 2 or the square root that we were looking for was right here, well, then that means x1 is less than it. So in order to get 2, this would have to be bigger than it. This would have to be bigger than the square root of 2, right? If we decrease this, we have to increase this to keep this product. And, and similar on the other side. So we know that we've uh, bounded. It, it, regardless, we know that we've kind of trapped the actual root in, in between, whichever the case may be. So what that tells us is that, the okay, well, we don't have the actual values. We know we're outside of the value on either side. So what should we do but maybe cut it in half instead and use this as our next approximation? So that's what I'll call x2. And what that's going to be is just the midpoint or the average of this x1 plus uh, 2 over x1 which in this case, we said we were going to start with uh, 1 and a half plus 2 over 1 and a half. And this is still not the actual square root. However, we are much closer. And similarly, if we considered uh, x2 and 2 over x2, halfway in between those would be an even better approximation still. So we should do that. x2 plus 2 over x2. And each time that we repeat this, we get closer and closer to the value that we're looking for. So in the problems that follow this, you're going to be asked to compute uh, a number of approximations and to look at some patterns in the decimals as well as to uh, compute another example instead of the square root of 2, the square root of 3.